So according to the last video, we discussed the World Health Organization has five patterns of glomerular disease in uh, SLE. And we're going to talk about each one of those in this video. So the first the first one is class one, and it's normal, uh, less than 5%. There's nothing that you can see. Uh, class two is when you can start seeing stuff, and it's called mes mesangial lupus glomerulonephritis, class two. And these are the meningeal cells right here that lie adjacent to the afferent arterial and the efferent arterial, and they're kind of spread throughout the glomerulus. So what happens is these immune complexes, they deposit in this mes mesangeal uh, environment, in the mesangium, and there's a slight increase in the mesangeal matrix and the cellularity. So just what that means is that there's going to be more of these. So there's going to be more. There's going to be an increased number. And there is going to be cells that are going to be increased to kind of respond to that stress. Okay. So, and then the sec the third one is the focal proliferative glomerulonephritis. So the focal pro proliferative glomerulonephritis, uh, you know, the name kind of gives away. It's focal. It's in in some parts. It's in some parts. It's not in all of them, and they say there's got to be like 50%. So there just needs to be. It, it, it's just focal. It's in some parts, and there's about 50%. You see swelling and proliferation of the endothelial cells, the mes mesangial cells. You feel you see infiltration of the neutrophils. The so neutrophils are starting to come in here and respond to those immunocomplexes embedded in there, and then you see. A fibrinoid deposits with capillary thrombi, and you see mild microscopic hemato hematuria and proteinuria. So you see protein and blood in the urine, and so you can kind of see that right here on these two. Let me get a different color here. You can kind of see these spots developing right here with this starting to undergo necrosis, and they're starting to be. Um, swellings and different things. This is inside of a glomerulus, so you can kind of see see that happening. It's just it's getting worse. Is is kind of how you have to think of it, obviously. And so, just as a reminder, what happens in this type three? This is a type three hypersensitivity. Is you have the endothelial. First of all, you have this basement membrane, basement membrane, and then you have an endothelial cell in your blood vessel. And these Ig, these immunocomplexes, they gather and then they embed themselves into the wall. Now, what happens is the presence of these immune complexes, they activate the complement, and that attracts inflammatory cells such as neutrophils. So you see the neutrophils coming, coming to the area. They start secreting these uh, uh, lysozymes these uh, enzymes that will destroy things. And what happens is it doesn't. I mean, it destroys, but not not as much. Um, it destroys these uh, immunocomplexes at a slower rate than it does these endothelial cells. And once you start destroying these endothelial cells, then you get clots. You get you know cells that are reproliferating. You get all different kinds of responses to these to these uh, lysozymes to these enzymes. So the most common type is the diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. This is the most common and most serious. So what happens is the most of the glomeruli, so now we're instead of diffuse, we're going to most, or sorry, instead of focal, we're just 50%, we're going to most of them, show endothelial and mesangeal proliferation affecting the entire glomerulus. And you're leading, and it leads to hypercellularity of the glomeruli. So this is focal type, or class three. I should say class three. And this is class four. So kind of compare and contrast is you have one right here and one right here is in the focal, and then this is the diffuse. And you can kind of see that 
all of this space is in, there's increased a in number of cells. You're getting endothelia and mes mesangial proliferation. And they say that even you can fill up this whole Bowman's capsule. Here's Bowman's capsule right here, that little space where the urine kind of, or the filtrate rather, kind of comes out and then it flows down into the uh, proximal tubule. Well, right here can completely get filled up. And so can you, if you can imagine what's going to start happening is that if this whole net glomeruli is getting filled up with cells and this becomes a big war zone, you can imagine that this glomerulus is not going to filter anything. And so uh, another thing is immune complexes create an overall thickening of the capillary, capillary wall. And so, you know, as this starts filling up, there's little complexes all around here. And they resemble a rigid wire loops. Wire loops is... Uh, uh, you can remember that for diffuse proliferative glomerular nef nephritis type or class 4 in SLE. And so you can kind of see these wire loops that are being formed because of this certain type of staining. So, and then in the electron microsp microscopy reveals electron dense subendothelial immune complexes. I just realized that everything that I just explained was out of this picture. <laughs> so here's the basement membrane here and here is the endothel endothelium right here. Here's the endothelium. Here's the basement membrane and these immune complexes can are underneath this endothelium and here's the mes mesangial cell. Here's a red blood cell and if this process continues you can see that this space is only going to get narrower. And then we'll go down to the last part is the immune complexes can be visual, visualized by staining with the fluorescent antibodies and they're directed against the immunoglobins or the complement and then you can kind of see that this glomerulus is filled with these uh, immune complexes due to this type of uh, labeling and this fluorescent antibody technology. Well, that's pretty cool. So the glomerular injury, what it ultimately does is it, it, it leads to scarring and glomerular sclerosis. And after this glomerulus is scarred sufficiently and hardened, what's going to happen is it's not going to filter anything. So patients with have, have uh, blood in their urine, they have protein in the urine, they have high blood pressure because, you know, part of the kidney can control your how much your blood pressure is. So if you have, uh, you know, these kidneys that aren't working right, well, then you're going to have an increase in blood pressure and ultimately you're going to have renal insufficiency and renal failure. So type 5 um, is the gl membranous glomerular nephritis, and it's similar to the idiopathic uh, membranous nephro nephro nephropathy that we're going to talk about later. But the widespread thickening of cap capillary walls that's caused by an increased deposition of membrane-like material as well as accumulation of immunocomplexes. And you can kind of just see throughout this state, class 1 through class 5, this whole process is just getting worse. You know, it's just worsening. There's more immunocomplexes that are being bedded in this glomerulus. There's more um, response to the area. There's there's scarring. There's thickening. There's, you know, all the cells are trying to respond to the th on, uh, rep respond to the stress. So, patients with this have a histological change. Almost always, they have severe protein in their urine, and they have overt nephrotic syndrome.